Hello, Catherine here, and today I'm going to demonstrate four ways to transfer an image to a linoleum block for printmaking. I'm going to show how you can transfer an image with just a pencil, tracing paper, transfer paper, and with an acrylic medium. So the first one, just a pencil. So if you have an image, whether it's a drawing in a sketchbook, or a photograph that you've printed, or a magazine, or newspaper clip, um, one thing you can do, I would say if you have a drawing and you don't want to draw on top of it, try to make a photocopy of it. Um, so here's a photocopy here. You can use any pencil, but the best ones are soft pencils with a B on it if you have graphite pencils. And basically you can kind of rub on the back side of your sheet where you'd like your image to be. I like to go in multiple directions just so that Graphite kind of hits the tooth of the paper from different directions. Let's see. And kind of cover the entire image you would like to do. Clearly, I kind of want to do the cat. So this might take a little while, but I'll just kind of show you what it looks like with just this. So I'm using an old scrap block here just for today, just to show you what these look like. And then you can kind of return to your image and you can either outline your image or if you're doing say a reductive lino cut, sometimes what I like to do is outline major shapes of tone. Like maybe I want to outline the cat. Um, little pause. But maybe I'll also outline, say, all the white areas um, as maybe the first place to cut in all the major shapes. So one of my suggestions is to tape this down so that it doesn't move while you're transferring everything. So I'll go ahead and try to do that without moving anything. Of course I moved it, but you know, demo purpose. So I would suggest taping it down in advance. And let's see, yeah, so it's faint, but I do have an outline of the cat here there's a few details missing, but that's one way you can get an initial image on your block. I usually return after this point, either with uh, going over it again in pencil or sometimes in Sharpie so that I can kind of see the image a lot better before I start to carve it. So take your time. Um, one note about tracing the image, I suggest if you have a harder pencil, like an H pencil, or you can use a mechanical pencil, or if you even want to do this part with a ballpoint pen, that sometimes makes a, a finer transfer than using a soft pencil that'll have a broader line. Um, things like that. So that is solely using a pencil. So and maybe Sharpie at the end, but that was optional. The next one I wanna show is how to use 
uh, just tracing paper to transfer an image. So I have my image over here of a little flamingo. It's a cup holder that floats in the water. It's great. Um, so I have gone ahead and traced it a couple times on tracing paper. If you don't have tracing paper or a clear kind of vellum, I have used wax paper or parchment paper um, or freezer paper in the past. Sometimes the wax um, and a couple of the other materials like the parchment paper that has like a coating on it. Sometimes it's a little bit harder, but it's not impossible. So I've gone ahead and traced it with just pencil. So one thing I could do if I have tracing paper is that I drew this in a soft pencil. The simplest way is to just kind of flip it over and kind of retrace everything onto your block. So I flip this over and if I just kind of go over it, I can kind of transfer it that way. Be careful that you're not pressing down so hard that you're actually making an indentation or mark on the lino cut. Let's see. So as you can see, it transfers fairly well that way too. Um, so if I want to take the whole time, I could do that. Um, but you can also do something similar to the other pencil one by covering the back side of the paper with the graphite. Or there's a few other things you can, drawing tools that you can use if you have them. So kind of using this as an example. Um, maybe if I have, I like to use chalk pastels or some kind of soft charcoal. I like vine charcoals that are nice and big, or you can get the smaller vine charcoal. You can also use compressed charcoal, but sometimes I find that vine charcoal being so soft kind of does a better job. So I might just go ahead and use the really big one I have. It's a lovely sound. Okay. Well, try not to do that. Okay. I had a tear in this piece of paper because I can only find three pieces of tracing paper at home. So this is what we'll use. But just to show you what you can do, let me try it. So pretend that's not torn in five places. So just like before, you can kind of put your finger down and trace. Now with charcoal and some of the other uh, dry media, like chalk pastels, um, sometimes it's really easy to wipe it away once you adhere it. So I do suggest going back over the image with maybe a Sharpie before you proceed. Now with Sharpies, one thing to note, let me see. Yeah, so that's not too bad. It's a little bit faint, but I can work with this. Uh, one thing to note about Sharpies is that sometimes if you draw on a Sharpie on here and you don't do anything before you start printing, if you're printing in a very light color, say I want to print this in pink, um, the black ink will show up in your prints um, or can, especially if you're using a thin layer of ink. Um, so sometimes what I do in woodcuts, I might shellac a wood block, but with linoleum, sometimes I will use like a workable fixative to kind of just adhere on the surface. It kind of might 
alter the surface of the linoleum, but not to such a degree that I think it affects the print. So there you have tracing paper, either using pencil or using some kind of dry media. I've also worked with, say, Karen Dash color, and this is an oil pastel. These two can also kind of work, but I suggest if you use other colored materials, make sure you use colors that show up well on the linoleum. So you can kind of see the blue oops, and the purple. Um, so I think the oil pastel shows up a lot better than the Neocolor um, Karen Dash pencil. But in a pinch, you can use that as well. So the next thing I want to show you guys are transfer papers and kind of working with the same principles as using the tracing paper where we kind of cover the back and draw drawing mediums. Um, there's actually a few ways you can create a, a separate paper that can act as a way to transfer um, like a material to the surface of your linoleum block to do that. Um, one of them is called Sorol paper. So this is very much like carbon paper. Um, they sell them in large rolls and they come in multiple colors. And for linoleum, I prefer to use like the gray or the red. Sometimes they have, I think, a blue, things that are a little darker. I actually sometimes use the yellow one for like copper plate etchings. And they have a white one as well that's useful for that too. Uh, but this, you can kind of place and you want to place it so that the drawing, the material, the, that is in this case, it's like the wax free gray material is facing straight down. I'm going to use my cat again. And let's see. My cat only has one eye. She had cancer in her eye. We had to take it out. But she doesn't seem to notice. She's doing fine. She missed a few of her first jumps from a distance, but uh, she figured it out after that. Okay, and let's take a look. So as you can see, I think it actually makes a little bit of a darker mark. Um, of course, it's still a little bit, oops, light. Um, but I think it does a good job of transferring an image if you're tracing it with enough pressure. Um, so if you happen to have anything like powdered graphite or powdered charcoal, you can also make your own uh, transfer paper. Um, but one way I've learned is also using um, pigment. So right now I have Indian Red Gamblin pigment. This is often found in like the oil painting section, but it's just pure loose pigment. And this is iron oxide. I use this actually to make my own tra transfer paper for lithography because you need like a pigment that's not greasy. So usually I'll take a piece of tracing paper and I'll like tape it down. Oops. And if you're gonna do this method with dry pigments, you wanna make sure that you're using some safety equipment. So you wanna wear a dust mask so you don't breathe in pigments. And we're also gonna be using denatured alcohol or you can also use isopropyl rubbing alcohol. 
And because it's kind of a solvent, it's bad for you. So don't let it seep into your skin. So wear gloves. So I'm gonna put a teeny little bit of dry pigment on here. It's probably more than I need. I don't know why I'm doing this left-handed. I'm right-handed, but it'll do. So I just applied a little bit of denature and alcohol on here. And working out from the center, I kind of just like spread the dry pigment here. You can also use just regular masking tape. I give up. Let's see. Please wear gloves. And once you let this dry, you can kind of use this just like carbon paper, just like that Sorol wax paper. And it kind of transfers this red or red orange line. Probably need a little bit more. Um, and remove the tape and peel it up. And then you can kind of use that and trace your image on there. Okay. So the last method is using acrylic mediums. Um, you might have seen this if you've ever gone to the paint store or the art supply store and um, Liquitex, Golden, um, Winsor Newton, anyone who makes acrylics often makes other kind of modifiers or mediums. And so the two that I kind of use the most are matte mediums. Um, they have matte varnishes. Um, but the ones I like the most are the gel mediums. So this is heavy gel matte, so it's not glossy or shiny. And using an image, probably something that is either Xerox transfer or Xerox or laser printed um, or... I've heard that like old fashioned um, color prints sometimes work, like old magazines from like the 50s through 70s, you can like that are printed in a specific way um, that have inks that can be released through this method work the best. Um, so, what I usually do is I do one thin, even coat of this gloss medium right on here. And then right on my linoleum block where I'd like to put it. So maybe right here. And I try to do it nice and even. I kind of want to put a slightly thick coating, but I also kind of want to keep it smooth because sometimes if it's like really lumpy, that makes a difference onto how it like peels up. So you can apply this right there. And I usually let it sit until it dries. Um, I did a little test up in this corner with another piece. This was from that carpet area of my cat Xerox image. So I cut off the bottom and this was part of the edge of that. And so once this completely dries, um, I'm going to do it now even though I don't think it's going to work. Moisten the back of this with a sponge. If you have one that's like this with the really hard scrubby side, I'd suggest just using the softer side and make sure you bring out the wet sponge so it's just damp, not wet, not drippy. And so once you're done with that, you can kind of gently remove the paper. And because I'm not waiting for it to dry, it's just all coming up. But if it were to dry, sometimes it will stay right on the block. So I think this is best for if you have an image that's really high contrast um, and maybe things that are like light and dark, I think it's harder to see if you use are using a color image or if you have a lot of tones. So So I know I don't have a full demo of, one single method but hopefully I've given you 
an idea of four ways that you can transfer an image onto a linoleum block at home. Thank you very much.